You are listening to Radio Alamundi. Hi there, wherever you are. I'm Mark Rixiker, a freelance writer, reporter, producer, teacher, translator, tour guide, poet, singer, and songwriter. I speak several languages, and I'm the creator and founder of Radio Alamundi, an evolving podcast station where no language and all languages are spoken. It's a multilingual mix of music, poetry, lectures, languages, interviews, documentaries, recipes, and a lot more, co-produced with the students of the Alamundi International Cultural Center. You can find us on radioalamundi.bandcamp.com, podcasts.apple.com, Spotify, YouTube, Breaker, Player FM, Facebook. Search Radio Alamundi. Let me tell you a remarkable story about a poet by the name of Taylor Johnson. It all starts on a gloomy November day. It's Friday with its typical evening frenzy. So I tried to give it sort of a cultural touch by attending a so-called webinar, which pretty much consists of an online poetry reading session in this case. One of the performers is a poet by the name of Taylor Johnson, who reads excerpts from a recently published book and answers questions coming from the online audience. Something in Taylor Johnson's poetry appeals to me for whatever reason. And so, a couple of weeks later, I decide to reach out and ask for an interview. The use of pronouns on Taylor Johnson's website makes their identity as a transgender poet clear. But other than that, the poetry I check out is pretty comprehensive and conjures up travel images, almost like poetic postcards. And so, months after the online reading session, Taylor and I are in touch and set up a schedule for an online conversation. And it will be a wonderful experience and exchange of enlightened thoughts, ideas and stories with no room for issues and identities as topics. In addition to that, I'm proud to conclude that Taylor Johnson and I end the conversation as friends. And the chat itself is a journey, quite literally speaking. Taylor Johnson is sitting in a car using a friend's smartphone to connect while they are driving to a small town in rural Minnesota. So I make sure to include the road trip in our online conversation. We use our respective webcams only at the very beginning of the recording and quickly switch to audio to reduce battery consumption and to make the talk more convenient and comfortable for all of us in different parts of the world. So the following narrative includes excerpts from a collection of testimonies and interviews entitled Let's talk about it anywhere in the world, where it is all about people's voices, accents, and speech patterns, hand in hand with my own personal anecdotes and observations. In addition to that, people are allowed to introduce themselves in their respective, often indigenous, languages and dialects, and to speak their minds freely, without any paraphrases or expectations. So let the story go on from there. Again, for Taylor Johnson, it is a road trip. So they speak to me from a car, which is why the bulk of our conversation is audio. And Taylor finds that kind of cool. It allows them to think better. And that is good because it is a profound conversation as part of which I ask them to describe the surrounding scenery as a poet. That's what Taylor Johnson does. My name is Taylor Johnson, uh, I'm an artist, and uh, right now I'm in a car in Minnesota on a, on a road. Where are you originally from? I'm from D.C., Washington, D.C. 
So, uh, mm-hmm. which place do you call home at the moment? Well, right now, I'm a little bit everywhere with that idea. I feel at home right now in this car in Minnesota. I've been here for a little while, not in the car, but in the state. I also just moved to Virginia uh, from New Orleans. And it might have been when I was in New Orleans that, that we set up this time, which is also central time. So that that could have been what it was, too. But I don't know. I think home is everywhere to make it. When you look out your car window at the moment, what do you see? Uh, there's a wine and spirit shop. There's a lot of different trees, one of which is going orange and yellow. It's beautiful. There's a blue house, lamp post, uh, stop sign, more homes. Uh, I see an American flag, a trampoline, recycling bin, a lot of trees. What is the most poetic thing about it? Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, I think it is the trees. Um, but also, uh, I don't know. There's something like very American about it. That's like really beautiful. I, I kind of don't really dig this place, but I do dig what it is made of. You know what I mean? So the natural environment is probably the most poetic thing about it. I'm driving up right now on a, a shed that has some vines on it. I think that that's really beautiful. I don't mm-hmm. know. I think there's there's a lot of there can be a lot of poetry in in what is here. Yeah. There can also be a lot of poetry in movement. What about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think that's one thing that really uh, helps me think is is being in motion, whether it's walking or or being in a car, being like on a train or something like that. Flying isn't really the same way, but uh, like land travel, I really I get a lot from that. Yeah, and like you said, the the American road trip. I love road trips. I think they're very beautiful, and this country is like really beautiful too. So there's a lot that I that I pull from the landscape when when in motion upon it. What makes you American? Well. I guess it's just my conditioning, you know what I mean? I'm not sure. I, I, I think I've always wondered that. I remember when I, uh, I've only been to two other countries outside of this country. I went to France and I went to Portugal. Um, and when I was in Paris, I like people started asking me for directions, uh, like I lived there, you know? So I think that there's a way that something about me is able to to become part of the landscape. And I guess it's just like, what makes me American is my history. You know what I mean? How I how I got here physically in this form. That that's what makes. And I mean, I guess too the the currency that I use to live my life is is American and all the privileges of the American passport, uh, those things, and maybe some of my references. But I do feel like a little bit beyond the idea of nationality. I've never really considered much of my nationality, you know what I mean? I think it's universally like um, kind of a a shit, you know, mm-hmm. so. What's your cultural heritage? My cultural heritage, I mean, I'm black. My family's from DC. My grandparents are from Louisiana. Um, so I guess that we, we being being black and American, we've all inherited the the um, you know the the trauma and the weight of the transatlantic slave trade and this particular iteration going to you know this country. Um, so I guess that that is that is what my cultural heritage. I, I mean, I'm black. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I think that is that is what it is, and it's so. Uh, like uh it's a large room Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things in it i don't really try on either end of that idea you know what i mean so i'm writing i'm writing to write you know what i mean i'm not writing to to be black within my writing i'm writing to write Mm -hmm. and and it filters through my experience of being a human in this time and in this uh this era with my particular dna um so that that is that's kind of how it comes out but yeah i mean i think that uh so th- there's something that can be you can tap into something you know what i mean that can be universal 
uh, when you're making art, any art, you know what I mean? I think that a lot of times identity gets kind of uh, put a, put upon people who make art because it's kind of the easiest thing to reach for. But I do feel like there's something that, that is beyond this idea of like um, racial categorization that, that, you know, makes things a little bit more expansive because I think I am talking to some, some sense of expansiveness. However, um, blackness is an expansive space, you know what I mean? And I think that it's, it's important. It's not, I don't think that uh, maybe what is readily known at hand about blackness or black experience, black identity, maybe it's not present there for people, I don't know. Um, but again, I think we all come, because it's language, we all come to it with different different ideas already set in place, you know what I mean? So the the images that appear in your head when I say, you know, something about something in a poem, you know, it's, it's going to be different for everybody. But I do um, hope to, to speak kind of clearly to something that's inside everybody. My conversation with Taylor Johnson includes all kinds of experiences and feelings, which we discuss in detail. But we start out with their background, both as an American in general and as an African American or Black American. They go on talking quite a bit about their cultural background and heritage and how it makes it into whatever they do poetry, visual art, music, and whatnot. Then we move on to Taylor Johnson's poetry. How do you create something out of nothing? Mm -hmm. um, I think with like a lot of hardship. Um, I don't know, like, if I'm making something, it kind of, it's not really easy. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's, there's a lot, especially like the things that I wrote for my book. I don't know. I think it, it, it was a hard space to be in, um, to, to write those poems. And I think any kind of, uh, act of creation is labor. You know what I mean? And I think, yeah, uh, it can be physical, emotional, spiritual, all those things. It's just like, you know, serious labor. Um, so I, I work for it, you know what I mean? I, I kind of sweat for it. And I think a lot of times I'm, um, I get kind of down about my own process, my lack of heart process. And I think, um, mostly I, I identify as an artist because I'm always making up my shit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really have a set thing that I do. I do a lot of things and I, I, I love the expansiveness of my mind. It's very chaotic, but um, I, I just, I, I love that, you know, and I think that um, the more that I, you know, encourage that side of myself, the more I, I feel comfortable in it. Um, but it, but it is true. A lot of people don't identify as artists, but I, I do think that that's like, it's very important to me. I think that, you know, I've, I've written this book of poems, but there's a lot of other things that I want to do that I want to create. Um, yeah. What are you working on right now? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm working on poems right now. I'm working on a few things in, in, in my mind, at least. Um, but I'm really interested in, like, immersive experiences, you know what I mean? Like, I, I really like the idea of uh, being inside something. And whether that is with poetry or with sound or with, like, something that's a built installation, I feel like I... I uh, I want to be as close to the person who's in taking the art as possible. You know what I mean? Not me physically, but just like what I'm trying to convey. I would like, I would like for there to be a moment of intimacy. And I think that I achieved that with my book. Um, I can, I know that there's like a closeness that people can feel when they read it. Um, and so anything that I make, it's going to be about that, that idea. I think something that's really important to me culturally is, is being from D.C. And, and is listening to the indigenous music of D.C., which is go-go music, which is a very percussive, surround uh, kind of kind of sound and, and experience. Uh, so I'm always trying to replicate a certain ecstatic feeling that I get from, from that sound into something a little bit more larger um, and, and, like, beyond the sound you know what I mean because I think mm -hmm. there's a lot within that music about how how people can connect 
to each other, how people can move together. Um, outside of the idea of like dancing, it's just more like um, some kind of like, I don't know, egalitarian or horizontal kind of um, network of, of like trust, I guess. That part of our discussion includes various kinds of sounds and how they make it into Taylor Johnson's poetry and art. They describe several kinds of soundscapes they are familiar with, including a particular musical style from Washington, D.C., their hometown, by the name of Gogo Music. But Taylor is in Minnesota at the time of our conversation, and the surrounding soundscape is almost opposite to the urban environment of Washington, D.C. Taylor Johnson speaks fondly of the whistling sounds chipmunks make in the area. What's the coolest sound you've heard recently? <laughs> the coolest sound I heard recently, well, out here there's a lot of chipmunks and they make a, a certain kind of chirp, I guess, to alert themselves or the people, the chipmunks around them of uh, predators, but it sounds like a bird. And I had no clue that it was a chipmunk, uh, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a chipmunk and it's not a bird. And I like that. Um, it kind of, kind of baffles me. Yeah. What's the state of your political consciousness? My political consciousness. I mean, it's with the animals again, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, uh, I think as somebody who makes things, it's easy to like kind of tap into the world and be like, I, I know what's happening. I can feel just by how the people are, how it feels outside, what's happening in the world. You know what I mean? And, uh, I don't know. I think my, my political consciousness is, uh, is always going to be anchored in, in, in what I come from. Like the people who gave birth to me were both, you know, black nationalists. Um, so there's always going to be that within me. But I, uh, my earliest education was in was in that of like uh, learning about how different cultures experience the divine. So I think that I'm my political consciousness is like necessarily spiritual too. You know, and and it feels bad in the world when those things are devoid, like how people uh, assign order is devoid of like some kind of spiritual element nocturne what was rampant in me was not wisteria perhaps decay or loss of reflection no one like me gets old or so i thought even as i watched the days fade into each other was i no one which phrase means a grown-up girl micah gilded pure myth gone the row might say I was trying to find the door to nothingness, that the wild was already in me. However, I walked out my bed to find my skin, only to return, moon drunk, ramble laden, stripped to sinew, a broken syntax, no denying how I got here. I laid down among the tall grass and came up a specter. I came up everywhere. This poem speaks to me it voices something that i feel in me why why mm -hmm. i mean i i i appreciate that you say that i cannot say why for you but i can say that uh, like i said before i think that i'm always trying to get at i'm trying to lose uh, the the hold that i have on on myself like on the egoic self, you know what I mean? To to let go into something that is a little bit larger, which is where art comes through, you know what I mean? Like uh, that's that that could be why you feel something. Uh, the other reason why you feel something is because you need to feel something. I, I really don't know. I don't know for you how words land, you know what I mean? Like I think it's cool that you are from this other country and have a different affinity to language and can still feel something. And maybe part of that is just the, the music of it or the grammar or the syntax or like what whatever it is that, that draws you in. I can tell you where I was when I wrote it if if you want. Sure. Yeah, I was I was in Brooklyn, New York, and I was listening to, you know, Chopin has a bunch of nocturnes. So I just was listening to Chopin's nocturnes 
and wrote a bunch and this is the one that I like the most um, yeah so there are many different places Taylor Johnson and I explore in the course of our conversation one of the poems I asked them to do a reading performance of conjures up images of streetscapes and street corners at night long after dark in this case we are in New York West 177 from Broadway all night you eyed the man I wanted to be my jaw flexed tight anger slipped into desire easily he would rise easily you would disperse pleasure made into light What you want under him, I put on to amuse. I, your worked supplicant. Yes, love is looking away. My desire greened in your dismissal was technicolor and twilight made and never turning off. The city air hung humid above our charade. What need I could feel to transubstantiate, to unravel. So where are we here and where could this be? Yeah. Um, this is just an intersection that I was at. I was at a restaurant, uh, at that intersection. It's a Dominican restaurant that I like. Um, I don't know if it's still there. I think probably still is there. Um, yeah. And we're, we're just uh, in the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. But which city? <laughs> oh, we're, we're, we're in, uh, we're in New York. We're, we're up in, uh, what's that Washington Heights? Yeah, I I mean there's there's no West One Seventy Seventh in New Orleans. There's a Broadway. I used to live near Broadway in New Orleans. It could be anywhere. You know what I mean? I think uh, for me the title it it it, it was indicative of what, the mood. You know what I mean? Like it kind of it set me up to think about this thing that I was inside of experiencing in this particular place. Now the body of the poem doesn't talk about the place at all it doesn't really matter um so yeah it can be it can be anywhere you know what i mean um and i think that that, that there's something i guess that i'm noticing now that we're speaking about when i title things with like street names like i got another poem called eighth and Ingraham. that could be anywhere you know what i mean like it just happens to be the corner that i lived on in dc um but it could be it could be anywhere because there's a specificity that is ultimately wider than, than my specific moment inhabiting that specificity, you know? How much of a sense of humor is there? Uh, in, this, in this particular poem? Um, yeah. You know, I think... Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. I think in, re in retrospect, when I think about the specificity of the moment, I can be like, oh, this is something is like it it might i might laugh at it later on you know what i mean i think in the moment i don't have that that sense but i think uh yeah i think that that i can i can see i mean i can see humor in it there's, there's like definitely a kind of darkness there that i'm wrestling with in the poem but there's humor on the other side of that darkness i guess when i look at it i haven't thought about it in a humorous way before this moment but yeah Please mm -hmm. define transubstantiate. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I guess most people's uh, sense of that word is like the Catholic Church's transubstantiation of the body of Christ into the wafer and the blood into wine. Um, but I think in, in this sense, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, changing myself you know what I mean does it the what does it mean to get someone's attention um how can I show up in the best form so that you look at me ultimately is kind of what's happening in the poem um yeah so that's that's what it means but you know I think it's it's like a big term that I recognize carries with it like a lot of uh religious uh symbology and weight That I, I mean, I'm not a Catholic. I, I don't really know too much about Catholicism, but um, yeah, it, it carries with it that that kind of weight. I think, in, yeah, in, in the thing, and, and ultimately throughout the whole book, I think that that's, it is kind of a theme of like trying to become 
something outside of the self you know what i mean how 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 can we kind of uh yeah just become just change you know what i mean little and big taylor johnson tries to put things into words in their poetry making the use of language and lines on paper fundamental to them as an artist musician and poet music is part of some of taylor johnson's projects in the near future and then there is a residency in oregon another scenic spot on the map which we briefly discuss and we don't shy away from more trivial topics like how we sleep and what we read swapping questions answers anecdotes and stories back and forth how did you sleep last night how did i sleep last night i slept pretty good thank you for asking me yeah i slept pretty good i like sleep i think that sometimes when i'm really in the mode of creation i will stay up all night i do like writing at night um and into like the smaller hours of the day um but i yeah i i slept i slept well last night how did you sleep last night oh uh not enough but fantastic good 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 what's uh, enough sleep for you oh uh in general i go by uh when i have a lot go- uh, going on like right now between 4 and 6 hours mhm mhm what about yeah. you uh like yeah six hours is good if i can get six or seven hours that feels really good yeah how do you feel now how do i feel now i mean you know it's interesting because um i you know i'm chronologically older than i was then but also i feel like at at any point that i'm writing a poem or any any time a poem is you know happening for me um it's teaching me something across time and that's what's like so cool about making art in general is just like you kind of are timeless in this way so i i still learn things from it i don't i don't think i always have a clear answer about um how something lands with me that i wrote or like how i feel about a certain thing i think i'm always in a process of learning alongside you you know as the person who's taking it in about what i'm doing and and everyone kind of gives me a different you know different sense of what i do and i like that cuz it it expands how i see what i'm doing do you use dictionaries do you try to create new words and expressions or something like that you know i don't i don't think i create any new words but and i don't use dictionaries um but i will I don't know I think language is kind of always moving in the air all the time so like sometimes words will just happen I just happen upon them in my in my writing or something that and I don't even know about it until I look it up later but I don't really try to find a word unless it's like a word I've heard in conversation that I want to work over a little bit more but I don't I don't think I'm somebody who really makes a lot of language if that makes sense but I do think that I am interested in um the order of things you know syntax um and and what that can do outside of the individual word how important is the layout the page set up for mm-hmm. you it's very important i mean that it, that's that is that is the muscle and the music of the poem is the line you know what i mean the line is the it's the unit of breath and meaning in a poem so how those things fall is very important to me and i i take time with that for sure And I think it's interesting because sometimes poems I'll write a poem and it'll be exactly lineated as it needs to be and then other poems I'll, I'll have to take more time with them but yeah I do I do pay a lot of attention to the line I I try to So what are you up to now? What I'm up to I mean I'm in this car about to go inside a house probably going to eat some cake later take a walk at an arboretum um I'm going to, I'm actually going to Oregon uh in next month um to a residency for seven weeks or six weeks something like that and i'll be working on a poem called him h y m n and also uh learning a little bit about blueprints and uh maybe making some drawings maybe making some music i don't know i'm i'm open <laughs> any questions Yeah, what are you reading right now? I wonder what you're what you're reading, what you're taking in. 
what kind of passes through your visual field? Well, yeah. uh, my visual field is the stack of books that I'm reaching out for right now. Eventually, I asked Taylor Johnson to give me a quick guided tour of the small town in Minnesota where they have just arrived at the end of our conversation, switching the webcam of their friend's smartphone back on. It looks like a slice of Americana in a rural part of the country. That's how Taylor Johnson's road trip ends. This is where we wrap it all up. And the story goes on from there. This could be a momentum, like a postcard of the place mm -hmm. where you are now. So what sort of emotions do you feel when you see what I'm seeing? Well, when I see what you're saying, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad to be still here. I, I like this town. It makes me feel good. I've only been here just a few times, like two times, two, three times. So it's not. It's not totally known to me, but I feel like a sense of home here. Yeah.